Recording like in you progress. Have, like you have a lot on your head. <laughs> it's a no, Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. Um, okay, so, so once again, just very quickly, that we're, um, because of my change in schedule and uh, my, my teaching change and my moving change, so we're going to be reducing the class. I shouldn't say reducing; it's not right. But we're going to be we're going to be condensing the class into once a week, Tuesday mornings. Um, will be a, a live class, you know, live on on Zoom, as live as it gets these days, um, live on Zoom, and uh, it'll be for approximately forty forty five minutes, so that we can get a little bit more done each time. And uh, the f- next Tuesday there will be class. It'll be probably on Rosh Hashanah, and then every Thursday I will put it out. A, um, if you want to get onto the onto the uh, WhatsApp group from the f- from Modian, so then just let me know and we'll put you on the on the WhatsApp. Send me your WhatsApp number, and I'll be happy to put you on the on the WhatsApp group. It's um, I think called Zoom or something, um, but we'll put you on the WhatsApp group, and then there will be a Pasha Shir that goes out and the Shabbos message um, that I put out every week and put on the on the Zoom. The, those things will also be available on the YouTube channel on my YouTube channel. Okay. Needless to say that this was, um, this, well, I, I shouldn't say was because it, it is, we're just reshaping it a little bit. That's all. It's not done. Um, but it is a, uh, an extremely important part of my life. And, um, and I know for, for my wife also was an important part of her wife. We got a chance to spend a half hour together every day. It was great. And, um, the, uh, you know, it, it, I'm, I'm going to miss the I'm going to miss the the daily contact, but appreciate the um, the the weekly contact and, uh, and appreciate our ability to be able to um, to still to be able to join together and to learn together. Okay, we have great, amazing pasuk today. And all I got to do is find my notes. Okay, here we go. Okay, so one pasuk today, amazingly, pasuk says like this. Chesed ve'emes, so Shlomo HaMelech yesterday told us that B'ni Torah Yal Tishchach, don't forget my Torah, U'mitzvosa Yitzor Libecha, told me about the positive commandments and the negative commandments, that I have to stay connected to them, and that I can't forget them, and we said that forgetfulness and memory is really about connection. So when it says that God remembers us on Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, Ata Zoycher, you remember all of our actions and nothing is forgotten in front of you. That means that you remain connected to us always. And why should we remain connected to the Torah? Kiyorech Yom Emushnoschayim, because it makes our life, it fills it with meaning. And ultimately, it brings us great peace. For Shalom Yosef Loch. How do we do this, says Shlomo Melech? Chesed ve'emes. Al Ya'azvucha. Kindness and truth should not be forsaken by you. Kashrim. Okay, it's up on the chat, the, the sukkim. Koshreim al gagrosecha, that you should tie them on your neck. Kosveim al luach libecha, and inscribe them on the tablet of your heart. Actually, the truth is, I'll throw in the next passage, though I didn't put it up there. I apologize. But umitzachin vesechal tov, and you will find favor and goodly sense be'ine elohim va'adam in the eyes of God and man. <clears throat> so what's Shlomo Melech telling us in Pasuk Gimel? Let's just break down the Pasuk and, and understand what it's saying and then work on the pieces. So Shlomo, Shlomo Melech is telling us that don't forsake chesed ve'emes, that's number one. Number two, kashrim al secha, tie them around your neck. And number three, kashrim al luach libecha, write them, meaning chesed ve'emes, write them on your heart. So why these three? Knows why are we? Why is what's this progression? What's the what's the concept of the progression? Don't forget Chesed ve'emes, tie it on your on your neck and write it on your heart. And why Dafka Chesed ve'emes? There are many many midos, many characteristics that are important beneficial characteristics. Why Dafka these two characteristics of Chesed and emes? 
So ultimately, we have to ask the question of what is chesed. And if I asked you, you would tell me that chesed, of course, is kindness. We know that chesed is kindness. Chesed is much deeper than just mere kindness. We know that tzedakah is also being kind, is giving charity, is giving money to other people. But chesed is not with money. Chesed means not only with money, but it means with your body, with your time. That when you, when you volunteer, when you give time to another person, when you sit and listen to another person, you're doing a chesed. When you lift a person up, you're doing chesed. Chesed can be done both with your, with, with your, your possessions and also with yourself, with your person. We also know that chesed can be done, tzedakah can be done only when a person is alive. To give tzedakah to another person can only be done when, when everybody is alive, whereas chesed can be done posthumously. Chesed can be done even when a person, even when a person is God, because they can, they can still be the beneficiary, beneficiary of a person's kindness. Saying Kaddish for a person is a tremendous chesed. Giving tzedakah on behalf of a person is a tremendous chesed. And we know that the difference between chesed and tzedakah is, is that tzedakah can only be given to the poor. Chesed can be given both to the rich and to the poor. We know that it's one of the pillars of the world. We've learned it together. On three things the world stands. I'm not sure that everybody knows that Gemilus Chasadim is not written explicitly in the Torah. There is no commandment in the Torah that says that you should be a gomel chesed, that you should be somebody who does kindness. You can't point to the Pasuk. Now, there are references in the Talmud as to verses in the, in the Torah that are there to teach us that chesed must be done, but there's nothing explicit. Thou shalt do a kindness is not in the Torah. Isn't that an incredible thing? That it's one of the pillars of the world, Ashlosha Dvarma Olamomed, and yet it's not written explicitly in the Torah. The reason that it's not written explicitly in the Torah, say our rabbis, is because it is so understood that it needs to be a part and a parcel of every single thing we do. We know that when we say in the Aisha Schayel, we say the Torah's Chesed al Lashona, that the Torah of kindness is on her tongue. So the Talmud asks, is there a Torah of kindness and a Torah not of kindness? That, oh, she has, to, she has the Torah of kindness on her tongue. As if Ki'ilu, there is a Torah that's not of kindness, that is not on her tongue. Really? There's a Torah not of kindness? And the Gemara answers, yes, there is. There is a Torah of kindness, and that's a Torah that's done with other people in mind. I do my mitzvah, but I have in mind how I can be mashpia, how I can, how I can affect other people. That in everything I do, I, I wonder and worry about the effect that it has on somebody else, both the positive and the negative. When I'm about to do something negative, I think about how is that going to tear down somebody else? Who's going to be dragged down with this and therefore I need to be careful with it? But in a more positive way, when I do something beautiful, I want to do it in a way that everybody can see so that it can have a hashpa, that it can have an effect on other people. Anonymous charity giving is not the highest form of charity. Now I know your eyes are going to bug out because you've been taught that it is. That's when you're giving to another person. When you're giving to another person, to a human being, give it anonymously that you don't know where it's going and he doesn't know where it's going to. That's the best way to give tzedakah. But when making a donation to an organization, don't give it, don't give it privately. Don't give it anonymously. It always makes me crazy when you see the list. You know, Mr. and Mrs. Goldberg, Mr. and Mrs. Schwartz, anonymous, 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 his brother-in-law, and anonymous. Right? What's that? How does that inspire me? Because I know that there were 10 anonymi that gave, that gave, a, that gave a, a, a donation. But when I see this one's name and I see this one's name and I say, you know what? I should talk participate in this also. It inspires me. It pushes me. That's an important part of giving stuck of, of doing any mitzvah, of not just how I'm doing it, but who am I taking along with me? And therefore, there is a concept called Torah's Chesed. There is a Torah that is of Chesed, and that was what we praise the Jewish woman for, that the Torah's Chesed Alashona, the, the Torah that has in mind other people. And that Torah is basic and, and specific and fundamental to the Torah that we keep. And therefore, we don't have to tell you in the, commandment, in the commandments of the Torah, thou shalt be a Baal Chesed, thou shalt worry about other people. It is understood, it is a given 
that that's the way every mitzvah needs to be done. Every mitzvah needs to be done in a way of worrying about other people. It is a part and a parcel of who we are. Because ultimately, what is the mitzvah of chesed? If I had to boil it down to its lowest common denominator, the mitzvah of chesed is worrying about other people, stepping outside of ourselves and focusing on others. What's emes? Emes is truth. We say that Chos Moshe Kodesh Baruch Hu is emes, that the seal of God is truth. Truth means when we say that things are true, that means that they are all real. They are all, they have a, a foundation in godliness. They are all reality. They are emes. They are integrated. They are, um, emes is so important that our Torah is called the Torah of Emes. It's a Torah of absolute truth. It's a Torah that has, as we pointed out once, Aleph, Mem, Tuf. It has a beginning and a middle and an end. It's a Torah of integrity. It's a Torah that reads clearly. It is a Torah that, 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 that works. It is so important, Emes, that we say, Midvar Sheker Tirchok. There is no other commandment in the Torah that says from the from this you have to remove yourself. It doesn't say midvar murder tirchok, that you have to distance yourself from murder. You have to distance yourself from, from other things. It doesn't say that, but midvar sheker tirchok. But from a lie, you have, to, you have to remove yourself because a lie is stepping outside of reality. And let me explain. We know that the, we're taught in the Gemara that if I say to a Baal Tshuva, you know, remind him that he wasn't religious and that now he's religious, or to a ger, to a convert. You know, that you used to dance around Christmas trees and now you're such a holy roller. If I make my wife cry, if I, um, if I, if I um, do other kinds of things, it is considered a lie. Now, if I make my wife cry, I've hurt her. If I turn to a convert and remind them of their past and remind them of their past transgressions, I'm hurting them. If I remember, remind about Tshuva that he's done something wrong so that, you know, that he used to, he used to eat treif and now what do you think you're so from? Then I'm hurting him. But where's the lie? Because the Torah has a reality. When the Torah talks about marriage, the Torah says there's a reality to marriage. The Torah says that that a man and a woman are considered like one organism. We have an incredible math under a chuppah. One plus one equals one. That's new math. That one soul and one soul equals one soul. That's the way, that's the reality for a marriage. We have a reality for a ger. A ger is kekata noila dummy. It's like a child that has been reborn. A brand new organism, no past. A Balchuva, a Balchuva has completely eradicated his past and a Balchuva has become another person. The Rambam says that he gets a new name and it doesn't mean like, you know, a lot of people, they become from so they, you know, they, they, they pick on Hebrew names. But it means that they get a new name, they get a new reality, a new essence. And that's what the Torah says, when a person changes, a person changes their entire world. When I turn to a Balchuva and I say to a Balchuva that, oh, you're the same as you used to be. Remember who you are in the past. I connect him back to his past. I'm stepping outside of reality. That's a lie. When I say to a ger, you used to be not Jewish. You used to dance around a, a Christmas tree. I'm reminding him of his past, which the Torah says that he has no past. He has no connection to it, no connection to a past. He doesn't have a father. He doesn't have a mother. He has no connection to a past. He's not legally connected to his siblings. He has no past. And I'm making him a past? I'm going against the reality of the Torah. That's called a lie. When I turn to my wife and I say, we're not connected to each other, because I would never do this to myself. I would never speak to myself this way. I would never talk to myself like that. But I'm, I'll talk to you that way. That means you and I are not one. And if you and I are not one, that's a lie. It's not just hurtful behavior. It's not just disgusting. But it's a lie because it's stepping outside of reality. Reality is truth. When you step outside of reality, that means you're engaged in a lie. What does it mean to be sane? 
Some of us don't really know. But what, what does it mean to be sane? It means to have a clear picture of truth and reality. Insane means that I'm not in touch with my reality. The Talmud tells us that when we sin, a, a, a spirit of insanity has entered into us. Because when we sin, we're stepping outside of the reality that God has created for us. The reality of our world is, is that we are connected to God and that we live with God. And when we step outside of that reality, that's called insanity. And that's living a lie. And that's why MS, truth, is so critical for us in our lives. Because MS is our reality and it is our sanity. What's the partnership between chesed and MS? Chesed is stepping outside of myself, of recognizing other people. And MS is understanding that now that I understand who they are, now I have to deal with them in a way of truth. Now I have to focus on them and the world in a way of truth. And that's why Shlomo Melech says, Chesed the Emes al Yazvucha. Don't ever leave Chesed and Emes. Because if you leave Chesed, that means you're going to be focused on yourself. You're going to be sucked into your own world. And Emes, Emes is the guideline. Emes is the reality. It's the thing that we check ourselves against, and it's the thing that we're constantly looking at. What is the truth here? What is the reality here? Then comes along Shlomo Melech and says, how do you make it part of your lives? Koshrei malgargaro secho. Bind them on your neck. The neck is the place where the sound comes from, the sound emanates from, from the throat. It means verbalize it. Verbalize your commitment to other people. Verbalize what you stand for, because when you say things, you lock yourself into them. You create your reality with your words. You ever wake up and you, you're raring to go and somehow you say, I'm so tired, and all of a sudden you yawn. We create our realities. I am happy. I'm happy with what's going on. I'm happy with where I am. And I say this over to myself and over to myself. I start to think it and I start to, to work it out in my mind. We verbalize our reality and therefore we create our reality. And then, kosvim aluach libecha. Internalize it. Take that reality that you've verbalized and now put it inside your hearts. And now write it on the tablets of your heart and internalize it. Make it a part and a parcel of who you are. Now look at this passage carefully. I mentioned that there were three things that were said in this passage. Don't forsake chesed ve'emes. Those are your actions. Koshreim al secha. Those are your words. Kosveim aluach libecha. Those are your thoughts and emotions. And those are the three parts of every human being. Those are the three parts of the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments begin in the head, in the thoughts. I'm the Lord your God. Then it turns to our words. Don't take my name in vain. And then to our action, keep the Sabbath, honor your parents. Don't kill, don't steal, don't commit adultery, our actions. Don't give false testimony, our words. Don't covet, our thoughts and our emotions. It's the pattern of the Ten Commandments. It's the pattern of our lives. It's the axis upon which we live. Action, thoughts, action, speech, 
thoughts and emotions. And that's what Shalom Melech is telling us. Shalom Melech is telling us that make sure that all of that is integrated. And you know what's going to happen? Umatzachin, verse 4, and you will find favor, v'seichel tov, and good sense, but not only be'ene Elohim in the eyes of God, but v'adam. When you see a person of truth, when you see a person of integrity, when you see a person who's an integrated person, who is an honest person, and a person who lives honestly, it's not only something that God gets nachas from, but it's something that has an incredible effect on other people. Okay, my thoughts. Ladies and gentlemen, we will see you in Hashem next Tuesday. Please remember, Thursdays is still Pasha Day, and Fridays is Shabbos Message Day. You, if you'd like, if you're not, you know, like, you know, it's up to you, but it's a, it will be available. Send it out again on the, uh, on the WhatsApp, and it will be up on the YouTube channel. Everybody should have a great rest of the week, a great Shabbos. And uh, Mirza Hashem will see everybody on Tuesday. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone. Well, good luck. Okay. Everything well. should go well. Amen. See you amen. guys next week. Next Tuesday. I expect to see everybody. Okay, take care. Okay. Bye-bye. Wonderful. Bye.